fundamentals has to be big today for the Tennessee Titans. The Titans return to the Jaguars end zone. On this edition of Titans All Access, the trip to the First Coast was a huge success. But now it's time to welcome the Lions from the Motor City to the Music City. John Robinson has a preview of this week's opponent, Detroit. The Butler did it in Jacksonville. And we have a special Nissan Insider as Mike Keith visits with wide receiver Corey Davis. The final home game of 2020. The chance to get 10 wins and keep the drive alive for the AFC South title. We've got some serious business in front of us as Titans All Access starts now. The monster, Derek Henry, sacked to John Evans, A.J. Brown to the house, Brian Tannehill taking him to school. Tennessee Titans are 9-4 after beating Jacksonville 31-10 last weekend. With Amy Wells, I'm Mike Keith welcoming you to Titans All Access as the Titans have clinched a fifth straight winning season. Woohoo! That's what you want, winning seasons all the time. That's it. Yep. Because you get the winning seasons, then you have a chance to get more. And that's what the Titans are looking for, the chance to get more, an AFC South title, a home playoff game, and then maybe, just maybe, even more than that. And it starts with your stars, and the stars showed out in Jacksonville. I'm going to start with number 22, Derek Henry. Mike Keith, Derek Henry had a phenomenal game, which you predicted last week. You said he had to, he did. The Titans got the win. Mike Keith's keys reign undefeated. Well, thank you very much, <laughs> but it wasn't real hard because he didn't play great against Cleveland and he had never had 100 yards in a game at Jacksonville. You knew that was gonna change. It changed by halftime. He had over 100 by halftime. By the time the game was over, 215 yards rushing, and he becomes the first back in NFL history with four games of 200 yards rushing along with two touchdowns. What the only guy in NFL history. What a great place to do it. Yes. No place like home, Mike. No Keith. place like home. And another star for the Titans, A.J. Brown. Makes a great catch early in the game for the touchdown that gives the Titans a lead they will never relinquish. Finishes seven catches, 112 yards, and the aforementioned touchdown his 800 yard game in his young career, and he's now over 100 career receptions. The guy is on his way to becoming a superstar. He's on his way to 1,000 yards, and so is Corey Davis. How fun would it be if they could do it together? It would be the first time for this franchise in 16 years that two receivers went over 1,000. They would need to average over the last three games about 55 yards per game. But for AJ, the work that he's putting in, paying off in good games, still leaves him sore on Monday. When you have big games like this, do you feel it in your body? Like whether it's soreness or fatigue or something like that, do you feel big games? To be honest, you feel every game, to be honest. <laughs> you know, uh, sometimes sometimes the day I think you feel like you got hit by a car, you know, but uh, that's football, that's what we signed up for. We keep going, we're gonna be sore, but we keep going. So. And that's football in December, right? Football every day. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of outstanding individual performances, Malcolm Butler had a great day against the Jacksonville Jaguars, and we're going to look at it in this week's Beneath the Surface with Coach Mack. That's on the other side of this break, so stick around. This is Coach Mack. Welcome to Beneath the Surface, powered by Microsoft Surface. Today, we're going to look at four great plays by Malcolm Butler as the cornerback matched up with the leading receiver, the Jacksonville Jaguars, DJ Chark. This was a beautiful, beautiful demonstration of man-to-man -man technique, tenacity, production. Just what a day Malcolm Butler had as a cornerback. Malcolm Butler is to the top of the screen. He's matched up on a deep dig on the inside. Watch Malcolm Butler match up to DJ Chark. Watch the footwork, 
Watch how he gets in phase. He gets on the backside hip in a tailpipe position, perfect position, gets the knockdown hand around, incomplete pass. This is beautiful coverage on an inside route by Malcolm Butler. Next play we're gonna look at is second and five. They're in a stack formation now with a cut split. Watch Malcolm Butler down here at the bottom of the screen. He wins the red line. We talk about the red line. The red line is a, a midpoint between the numbers and the sideline that the cornerback has to win and push the receiver out of bounds. Look at this perfect coverage. He is in perfect shape. No way for the receiver to get back to the ball. Does not interfere. Beautiful position. This is classic, classic training tape winning the red line on a takeoff route. Next play we're looking at, second and seven, it's 24 to three. And now what we see, Malcolm Butler is man to man on the outside. Watch the beautiful positioning that he takes on this deep post. Watch Malcolm Butler get in position, not panic, be able to get in a perfect hip position, goes high, high points the ball, catches it, beautiful interception. You can't play that any better when you're alone in man to man on a deep post route. Last play we're gonna look at, now we're down here in, in the red zone. Watch Malcolm Butler when they try to throw the fade in the red zone. Again, to DJ Chark, watch Malcolm Butler's positioning, watch his hand get up into the basket for this throw. It goes right to the end zone. That is the best that you can do in the low red zone on a takeoff. Malcolm Butler was perfect all day, man-to-man -man matchup against the top receiver. What a great day for number 21, Malcolm Butler. Would you like to win a Coach Mac bobblehead from Farm Bureau Health Plans? Go to TennesseeTitans.com slash OTPQ and ask Coach Mac a question. If your question is selected and asked on the OTP, you win a Coach Mac bobblehead from Farm Bureau Health Plans. 20 winners will be selected. Again, send us your question by visiting TennesseeTitans.com slash OTPQ. Time now for the Farm Bureau Insurance Scouting Report. This week's opponent, the Detroit Lions. Titans don't play them very much, but there have been some memorable games in the recent series. 2008, the traditional Detroit Thanksgiving game. The Titans at 10 and 1 go in and win 47 to 10. A lot of memorable things about this contest, including 100 yards rushing from both Chris Johnson and Lindale White. Well, the most memorable part of that game, though, was the turkey dance. The turkey dance. Dave Ball with the <laughs> interception and return, and he represented Thanksgiving with the turkey dance. 2012 at Nissan Stadium, one of the wildest games ever. Titans win 44-41. And Nate Washington makes one of the best catches, if not the best catch ever, at Nissan Stadium for a 71-yard touchdown on the throw from Jake Locker. That's certainly one we will never forget. Absolutely. But then we also have to talk about the 2016 matchup. And for that, I think we should bring in Titans general manager John Robinson. John, what do you remember about the Titans matchup against the Detroit Lions in 2016? Yeah, I, re I remember uh, Andre Johnson uh, catching the, the game winner to secure uh, my first win personally as general manager of the team. Uh, I still see Dre when we play Houston down there and uh, we catch up and I always remind him that, you know, he, he caught a lot of passes uh, in his career as a as a Hall of Fame receiver, uh, but none was was better than that one, at least in my opinion. Yeah, one of those game balls from behind you is from that game, isn't it? You would be correct, Mike. All right, so <laughs> let's talk about this set of Detroit Lions. They changed coaches three weeks ago. Daryl Bevel takes over for Matt Patricia. Can you tell any philosophical changes in the Lions since Bevel took over the team? No, not really, Mike. I mean, it's it's a group that, that plays hard. You know, they've, they've got good players on, on both sides uh, of the ball. They looks like they have a lot of energy. Came down to the wire in the Chicago game, and they came away with that win, and then in the Green Bay game, they battled back and forth, came up a little short, but but they're playing hard and, and they're making plays on both sides of the ball. You mentioned that Andre Johnson is a future Hall of Famer. So is the leading rusher for the 2020 Detroit Lions. I'm talking about Adrian Peterson. He still has over 500 yards this year, still could play at a high level. What has made Adrian Peterson so great throughout his career? 
Yeah, I mean, he's got really good size, Mike. He, he's got excellent vision. He's explosive through the hole. He's a really sturdy back that can, you know, that can take a hit, stay on his feet, and still churn out yards. You know, when you go down the scouting report of physical traits that you're looking for, AD checks about every box that you would want in a running back. Tight end TJ Hawkinson is really coming into his own in his second year. He's on pace to have more than 70 catches this season. What have you seen from him in year two? Yeah, you know, coming out and then last year in his rookie season, you saw the tenacity as a blocker. You saw that on the film when you watched the Iowa stuff. You saw his athleticism as a route runner. I think what he's doing is he's got a better understanding of, of coverages and, and leverages and uh, how to tempo routes to create some separation for himself. Not every route has to be run full speed or, or you know, to this landmark or that landmark. He, he's understanding the players that he's playing against, and he's a star at his position in this league. John, how would you characterize the Detroit Lions defense? Yeah, they got a bunch of really long players. At off the ball, a linebacker on the ball at, at the line of scrimmage. It's an attacking style defense. They do a lot of, of movement up front with, with stunts and, and blitzes and games. And, and it's a sound secondary. You know, it's it's a really good group that's that's really played hard the last couple of weeks. John, thank you so much for the Farm Bureau scouting report this week and good luck against the Lions. Thanks guys, see you soon. Coming up next on Titans All Access, a very special Nissan Insider. Wide receiver Corey Davis joins Mike Keith. That's next on Titans All Access. Welcome back to Titans All Access. It's time for the Nissan Insider, and this week Mike Keith is spending some time with wide receiver Corey Davis. And they're talking about it all, faith, family, and of course, football. I hope you're ready for this. Corey Davis, you have had an outstanding season to this point. We're not done. More to do, no doubt about it. What has pleased you most about how the 2020 season has gone for you on the field so far? I mean, obviously this is a season, you know, like no other with, with COVID and, you know, all the different protocols and everything. So just not only my ability, but the team's ability to adjust and, you know, just adjust on the fly and, you know, pretty much expect anything. Like I said, this is a, a different type of year. And the team has done a great job of adjusting and, you know, just making it happen this year. My time, my moment. When you make a play, it's like A.J. has to top you. And when A.J. Brown makes a play, it's like you have to top him. Th that's really the perfect scenario for any set of wide receivers. It's almost like the two of you are raising the level of each other's game. Yeah, that's what you want. Um, you know, we're going to compete against each other and, you know, try to make each other better each and every day. And, um, you know, we complement each other well. Um, he's a great player. You know, he's a, a great teammate, man. And I'm, I'm, I'm real happy that he's on our side. He's a... Phenomenal player, man. I love watching him play. You never stop working. I watch you in pregame warm-ups, and you're out with receivers coach Rob Moore, and he's throwing tennis balls at you. Yeah. And you're doing some sort of drill where you're not looking and having to, to catch. Is that kind of work something that it not only makes you more prepared to play, but makes you mentally feel like, hey, I've put in all the work, now the game is just fun? Yeah, um, 100%. You know, I'm a firm believer in your confidence comes from your preparation. And, you know, the more you prepare, the more confident you feel, you know, and that's something that me and Rob have been doing for a long time. That's going out there and, you know, getting my hand-eye coordination right. And um, like you said, it not, not only helps physically, but mentally as well. What has Rob Moore meant to you, Corey? Man, everything. It, it's kind of hard to put into words, but he's <laughs> he's been there for me, not only through, you know, my football adversity, but, but with life as well. Um, you know, there's a lot of things that, I've been handling, me and my family have been handling off the field that, you know, hasn't really been disclosed to the media. And Rob has been a huge part of that, you know, just keeping my mental right and, you know, making sure I'm taking the right steps. And his faith is really strong. And, you know, I've learned a lot from him on that aspect. Football or otherwise, what's the best advice that Rob Moore has given you? He gave me a verse that sticks with me all the time. It's Romans 12, 2. Um, you know, do not conform to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And that can apply, you know, not only in, in, in football, but in life as well. You know, like I said, you know, that's probably a verse I go back to at least once throughout the day. And, you know, it kind of gets my mind right and brings me back to a place to where, you know, I'm focused on God. And at the end of the day, you know, that's all that really matters is, is pleasing Him. You have been so consistent with the way you've gone about your job since the day you got here. 
since you were a rookie and, and you've had injuries, you, you lost your brother this season and everybody knows that story and the difficulty in that, and yet you continue to excel on the field. Where does that work ethic come from that has allowed you to be so consistent in terms of how you prepare? And I've, I mean, I've been like that, you know, my whole life. Nothing was ever easy for me. Nothing was ever handed to me. You know, I've learned at a young age that you, you want something, you got to go get it. And you know, you have to work for it. And it's not always going to be easy. You know, adversity will strike, but it, it says a lot about your character and who you are, you know, how you handle that adversity. You know, I'm expecting a, a little girl here in the next few weeks. And, you know, I want to be able to tell her that, you know, when adversity comes, you know, you want to stand strong and, and, and don't fold. So, you know, that's my motivation for sure. Being part of a team is a very special thing in everybody's life, whether you played in high school or college or like you in the NFL. Uh, that locker room has had your back over and over again. Your head coach has had your back. Can you describe what that means and has meant to you through the last months? Man, it's meant uh, <clears throat> so much, so much more than, than these guys even can imagine. Um, just to have them there for me and, you know, have my back and Braves and, and, and Art and Rob and all those guys, every staff member, every teammate reached out to me when I was going through what I was going through and my family was going through, you know, these tough times. They all reached out to me and they all just said, I'm praying about you and I'm thinking about you. And, you know, that goes a long way just to know that it's more than football with these guys. You know, it's a great locker room. I'm, like I said, I'm extremely happy to be a part of this team and, and got some great guys. As we're in this holiday season, it sounds like even in spite of all this, Corey Davis feels like he's a very blessed individual. No doubt. There's, uh, there's a lot to be blessed for each and every day. There, there's no question about it. Uh, keep up the good work. We're all very, very proud of you and proud of the year you're having in, in every way. You're something else. Corey Davis, thanks for being our Nissan Insider. Yes, sir. I appreciate you. More Titans All Access coming up. Mike Keith comes back with his keys, which is everybody's favorite part of the show. But coming up next, we're spreading a little Christmas cheer. Stick around. On the next Titans All Access, meet the Londoner who went to school with Harry Potter before becoming an NFL defensive lineman. I'm talking about number 94 for the Titans, Jack Crawford. We have a preview of Sunday Night Football from Lambeau Field and meet some famous folks who love the Tennessee Titans. All that and more on the next Titans All Access. As we return to Titans All Access, here's a story that will warm your heart. The Tennessee Titans combining with Bridge Ministry to make a difference for people in need. Watch this. Titans, Campbell's Chunky, Kroger are working together to benefit the Bridge Ministry. I am Chris Sanders and I'm out here today. We're giving toys, we're giving meals to, to families that are in need and this is what Christmas is all about. Today we're serving thousands of underprivileged children with brand new toys, with food boxes. And also we have a great, great surprise. $20,000 is going to be given to Bridge Ministry. A great, great opportunity to help families in need. Wow! <laughs> Thank you so oh, much! Wow. We were absolutely blown away. We had no idea, and thank you. This will help us serve so many people in our city in need. We are so grateful for the partnership of the Titans organization, Kroger, and Campbell's Chunky. We could not do it without you, and we thank you so much. Man, it, I mean, it feels really, really good, and the most exciting thing about it is, is watching the, the smile on the kid's face. I mean, a lot of times we, we, we have Christmas, it's not about what you can get, it's about what you can give. And this, this is what it's all about. I mean, my heart is really, really warm to just see people excited and people smiling. And it, and it just makes me feel good that even though we're going through a pandemic and even though we're going through a lot of trials and tribulations, to see the smiles on these kids' face, is, it's, it's just unbelievable. I love being out here. lovely but my keys your keys are also lovely oh, thank you and i think it's time for those now give us three keys i don't have keys this week what do you mean you don't have i keys have this three week? d's because we're playing detroit oh my god i know i try to keep it interesting for yeah, you yeah this is good and this word will fit to begin key number one or d number one is disrupt let's see big jeff daquan jones harold landry rashawn evans kevin byers 
all of those guys be disruptive on Sunday against the Detroit Lions. Defense got back on track in Jacksonville, did some nice things. Now it's time for more big plays. Disrupt the Lions offense is number one. All right, Mike, what's the second D? Distribute. Distribute the football all the way around the offense. And when Ryan Tannehill is at his best, he's playing point guard. He's throwing to all of the tight ends, including Jeff Swaim, who had a good game in Jacksonville. He's throwing the backs. He's using all of his receivers, Cameron Batson, Khalif Raymond, and obviously Corey Davis and A.J. Brown. This offense is at its best when all parts are being utilized. Arthur Smith loves to distribute the ball. Ryan Tannehill is good at distributing the ball. Distribute the football against the Detroit Lions. Okay, the third and final D. Yes, defend. <laughs> Nissan Stadium. Last two games at Nissan Stadium, Titans have lost only four and three at home. Got to be better. Got to defend the home turf. Got to set the stage for a home playoff game. Build that momentum. Let's get a win at home in front of Titans fans. Defend Nissan Stadium is the final D. So disrupt, distribute, defend. Mike, that was a little corny, but it turned out okay. Yeah, it worked. Landed the plane. You landed the plane. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You feel better now? I feel better now. Yes. I still like the keys, even when they're dad jokey. When they're dad joke. Well, mm -hmm. it's week 15. You got to come up with something different. <laughs> Another D. <laughs> Delete. <laughs> for Amy Wells, I'm Mike Keith. We thank you for watching Titans All Access, and we'll see you next time.